Today on Nerd Out, drip drops and fire hose. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano and we break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Uh, we're back from a short Thanksgiving hiatus. We were off last week, but we're back at it this week. Today we'll be talking about drip drops and fire hose. These are two projects I've been working on and they've, um, they are collaborating now. So without further ado, let's get into it. So what is drip drops? Drip drops is a token airdrop vending machine. It'll be on Cardano and you will be able to go to this website and you'll be able to withdraw up to 10 different project tokens at a time. So any any token projects that want to partner with Drip Drops, they can reach out and um, get set up to, to use this system. So this, this is kind of in response to, you know, a lot of different projects all spinning up their own systems for airdropping tokens. This is kind of a, a way that we can get economies of scale um, instead of people having to go to join this pool or that pool. Um, they can kind of join any pool and get some of the tokens from all the various projects. So it, it is a token airdrop vending machine. There are three different ways that um, tokens can be airdropped in, in drip drops. Uh, the first and primary way is the token project can set up a set token amount of eight, uh, set amount of tokens per amount of ADA staked. And then they can define what pool or pools those tokens get dropped on. Um, they also have the option, which we highly encourage, to drop at least some tokens on all pools in the ecosystem so that they get a wide distribution of their token. So that's important for liquidity for your project, etc. cetera. Um, there's also an instant reward system where a token issuer, you can figure given stake addresses um, in the system. So some, some projects may want to reward their past delegators and in that case, you can use the instant reward system for doing that. You just set up the stake addresses, how much each stake address gets, fire those off. The next time those users go into drip drops, they'll be able to pull those tokens. Um, another example would be if they wanted, you wanted to reward your your um, online communities with um, you know extra tokens or something like that. If they were early adopters or early fans of your project. Um, there's also going to be, this is not quite done yet, but a kind of a play to earn API. So for example, maybe Jet Chickens could, could drop space coins. Uh, we're also going to be using this system for the, the drip token itself. Um, the drip token, we're kind of planning on that being a, a governance token. So eventually that could be used uh, for voting on which token projects are put on the system. Um, or other other things to help govern the the community around drip drops. Um, so what that is, it's an API. It's kind of like the instant reward, except you know more of a an API level thing where you know those transactions are fired off depending on what the user has done to earn them, and then those will just be kind of accrued, and then you can go to drip drops and collect those. Now those can be collected anytime. They're not tied to the epoch like this first set of rewards is. So if you fail to get to drip drops during an epoch, those tokens that were earned by you during that epoch because of your delegation to given pools, um, those those just kind of go away. So you have to continually keep going back to this vending machine to get, get stuff out of it. Um, so it's in collaboration with Firehose. So what part does Firehose plays in all this? So I've, I've done several videos about Firehose. I won't go into too much detail here, but it is the low-level communication with the Cardano node. And so it handles things like watching the blocks arrive, looking for payments in, um, that arrived for drip drops. It handles bundling of those transactions together, um, you know, bundling the different purchase orders together. It handles the transaction chaining so we can have you know one bucket of tokens for a token project and continually as fast as they're coming in get those uh, payments back to the at least in the mempool ready to go back to the to the user that submitted the purchase order 
Um, it can also query live UTXO. So that's kind of the view of the blockchain as it exists in the future. So that's the trend the, the where the, the stuff sits in on the blockchain plus whatever you've submitted that's still kind of waiting in the mempool. So that allows you to do that transaction chaining. And then also the guaranteed delivery system, which resubmits transactions automatically for you if there's ever a block rollback. Um, so we, we keep track of what transactions we submitted and which blocks they land in. And if, if that particular block gets rolled back, we will resubmit them to make sure that those transactions, uh, if they weren't in the replacement block, they'll, they'll at least get on the blockchain instead of being dropped. Um, so this low level part of Firehose, that, that's kind of core stuff. And then there's a higher level system I've kind of built on top of it. I don't know if I consider this Firehose or not, or if I'll break it out into its own thing um, so that maybe I can go a little more public with the lower level stuff. Um, but right now there's a projects system, and this is where I build my various projects that are running on top of Firehose. So things like Pool Perks lives at this higher level. Um, there's also a project type called NFT Fountain, which is what I used for the Jameson Daniel um, Studio Life NFT music drop. So that's where, you know, it vins NFTs as people put in payments for that. Um, there's also a a project type for a fair initial stake pool offering like we're going to do for the Noom first airdrop. That's for the past delegators. So that's going to use one project type. And then there's also the drip drops project type that I've just finished building. And that's the one that can vend the multiple tokens at once. Um, there's a few others that are planned. Um, there's one called NFT Fountain NFT. And that's where you have to send in an NFT um, plus some ADA gas in order to get a different NFT. So kind of like if the, if the game you're working on, there's one called Crypto Squirrels, Squirrels that's coming soon. Um, and that one you have to like send in an NFT along with your payment and then it vins out, um, you know, a, a different NFT. I think with Crypto Squirrels, you have to send in, um, send in a squirrel trap in order to trap a squirrel NFT. So anyway... I'm sure we'll hear more about um, that project from its founder later. Um, it can do fungible token sales, a straight up, you know, sale in those jurisdictions in the world where that's legal to do. You could, you could do that. That that piece is not built out yet. Um, there was some talk about maybe CC Vault doing a, a fungible token sale at some point, but I haven't gotten back to those guys about it yet. So, how does Drip Drops? work on a high level. This is kind of a very, very dumbed down view of the world. But um, so this is um, this is the flow chart for after you've already selected your token. So there, there is a process at the beginning that says, what am I eligible for? Okay, I want to pick 10 different tokens. We do 10 at a time right now for drip drops. You've selected your token and then that, that uh, receive address goes over to the firehose side, which is the red side here. Um, and then we check the system to say, does this purchase order already exist for the stake address? If there's already one in flight, um, you can only have one going in flight, and that's to kind of limit how many um, how many drips you can get at, at one time. So you can continually going back until you collect, like if there's 20 tokens listed on drip drops for you, you can go through it once, collect the first 10, come back again, collect the next 10, um, and then there's also drip tokens, like I said, you'll earn based on withdrawing through the system. So, you know, if you want to sit there and click all day, I guess you could, but um, continually withdrawing the drip token. Uh, so you've entered it, the purchase order either exists, and then you'll just get a status page. If it doesn't exist, we calculate all the, the tokens and amounts you're eligible for, and we create a new purchase order in the system. A purchase order is nothing more than, you know, a new, uh, a brand new, unique enterprise address for you to send the gas to, to, to make the system vend the tokens. And so you'll get back, it'll say, you know, pay to a certain address this much, and then you'll get those tokens back. So then you come down to your wallet, and you send a payment through your wallet. 
And then on the fire hose side, we're continually watching that purchase order. Or we're watching blocks come in on the chain. And every time a block comes in, we look inside that block and we say, are there any enterprise addresses that are the target for these? Okay, here's some enterprise addresses. Do any of these enterprise addresses match any of our open purchase orders or our pending purchase orders? Oh, there's one that matches? Okay, then we go and we check the check the blockchain. We do a query on that address to see if enough of the payment has arrived. So if the full payment has arrived, then we go ahead and we put that into a queue and wait up to one minute to see if there's any others that will arrive during that time. And then those all get um, bundled together and then they're submitted as a chain transaction. And we want to chain the transactions so that we can actually put transactions on the chain as fast as they're coming in. So we can just have one bucket address for like all of these, you know, given, let's say, Noom tokens. And so we can just pull from that bucket and then use the live UTXO to build the next guy and the next guy and the next guy or gal that comes through the system and get those tokens out. And then once those all land on chain in order, everything is, is hunky-dory. So uh, we need to talk a little bit about protecting the chain. We, we obviously think that the system will be pretty popular. Um, and we know that the Cardano network parameters are currently very conservative. So block size has currently uh, just been increased to 72 kilobytes. And, you know, if we have thousands and thousands of users coming into this, we need to have a way to protect the Cardano blockchain and not get too overwhelmed or too too backed up. So there's, there's a couple scenarios. If the incoming transactions and the outgoing transactions are kept equal, we'll have kind of a natural back pressure on, on Cardano that keeps everything balanced. So if the fire hose transactions can land on the chain at the same rate that the new incoming are coming in, then you know it'll just slow down the incoming a little bit um, so that the incoming and outgoing will, will balance. However, um, there's not much we can do if everybody is piling in at once and there's, there's too many incoming transactions. And those are the ones that are making it on the chain um, kind of ahead of the fire hose transactions, even though we've you know, created them, we've put them in the mempool, but our mempool isn't draining because there's already all of these other transactions out there. So we have built uh, kind of a maintenance mode for drip drops so that if we need to, we can temporarily stop new purchase order creation while continuing to drain our mempool until, you know, we, we drain out, we, everything has been withdrawn successfully, and then we can turn that back on. Um, so it's just some control we wanted to have to make sure we, we protect the Cardano blockchain a little bit. So this is one of the tests we ran on testnet. And you can see this green line down here. This is what a, a normal nodes mempool looks like. So it's capped at that, uh, I think, 128 or maybe a little higher than that bytes. And then our fire hose mempool is this... Uh, this yellow line here and you see it it continually grows and every once in a while you know we get some blocks on the on the chain but this is uh, kind of 5,000 transactions coming in and then you know the, the transactions are done coming in and then you can see we start draining out on the other side here but you know we may have to actually turn on maintenance mode if we get too high here um, Ideally, we'd like to make sure we fulfill everything that comes in during an epoch. And so that's that's just uh, kind of what we have planned. So where is the status of all this? We're currently on the public test net. Our internal team is, is testing it. A um, few more features to build out. Uh, we're finishing out some of the, the DevOps work, making sure that the front end is scalable, and we've got all the important bot protection, stuff like that in place. Um, we're looking at a mid-December launch if all goes well, so probably a couple weeks from now. If you want to learn more or keep up to date on the status, this is the Telegram group, Drip Drops Official, and also follow the Twitter account, Contact Drip. And that's all I've got for today. So with that, nerd out. <laughs>